the rain for pattern in Zambia is just falls for four months. Which means within these four months you have to make sure you produce enough food for your children and for sale. So now since they have this extra water, which, make, which makes them have water throughout the year, so they can produce at their own time, than concentrating on the four months rain-fed rain crops. During the dry season, we don't have rain, we don't have anything to, to do. So we need to, to grow crops like cabbage, tomato, onion during dry season. That's why we need irrigation. About 70% of the workforce in Zambia depends on agriculture for their livelihoods. 96% of farmers produce crops for home consumption. Most farmers are small scale, they cultivate on less than 2 hectares of land. Due to limited access to irrigation water, crop yield is low and most small scale farmers cultivate only during the rainy season. As a result, 80% of the Zambian population suffers from food insecurity and 45% of children under 5 are chronically undernourished. Yet Zambia has adequate land and water resources to improve agricultural production. About 40% of southern Africa's water is in Zambia. The country has several large rivers, including the Zambezi and the Kafwe. Rainfall is plentiful, which helps to support good shallow groundwater conditions. But less than 2% of this huge water potential is currently used. Smallholder farmers are increasingly initiating their own irrigation plans. Options include small rainwater storage ponds, individual access to shallow groundwater, or river diversion. What we are doing, we are taking water from here, it goes up to 10 kilometers. That's why there are farms. The fear is that if we start disturbing the source, then the stream, will, the spring will dry. So the best way is to go and make uh, the farming at 10 kilometers. We have tapped the water from Mateshi stream, which is 14 kilometers from here. We use the same water to get the uh, Irish potatoes and bananas. With bananas, we just tap from the main farrow and allow it to go around the, the banana plants. We use the earth to block the, the water so that we allow it to, to go around the, the plants. There is still huge untapped potential for irrigated agriculture in Zambia. About 1 million rural households, more than 60% of the rural population, could benefit from investments in water. Agricultural water management for smallholders can clearly make a difference. The Agricultural Water Management Solutions Project was implemented from 2009 to 2012 to research and share ways of improving the lives of small-scale farmers through increased access to agricultural water. The International Water Management Institute, together with partner organizations, led a research on agricultural water management options for small-scale farmers in Zambia. IDE Zambia, the local branch of an international NGO, together with the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, facilitated the dialogue process across the country. As far as the Ministry of Agriculture is concerned, the Agriwater Solutions Project has uh, uh, added value to our wealth of knowledge on how to approach uh, issues of water and uh, food security. Agriwater Solutions is like a forerunner to uh, creating some basis for some of the interventions that we as a ministry are going into. With the help of local stakeholders and through advanced data analysis, maps have been created to capture the diversity of local contexts. The aim was to identify where people would most benefit from agriculture water management interventions. One aspect that came out strongly is the leading role of women among smallholder farmers. Their inputs and needs should be fully addressed. Promising solutions were discussed with farmers and local stakeholders in key locations across the country to find ways to sustainably, equitably and cost-effectively achieve the greatest livelihood benefits. One focus of the Agriculture Water Solutions Project was to improve access to low-cost irrigation technologies for smallholder farmers. Irrigation enables farmers to grow crops that fetch a higher price in the market. Currently, where farmers practice irrigation, many use buckets which requires a lot of labour. We prefer to work with individual farmers, um, giving them uh, access to micro-irrigation technologies. So a farmer's destiny lies in his or, or her own hands. Um, small um, pumping systems, treadle pumps, drip irrigation systems, which allows a farmer 
to access the water that, uh, that they've got and to, to use it on their own garden and not be reliant on whether or not the government official switches the water on this month or whether or not somebody comes to service the machines. And we find that is a, is a much more sustainable and actually much more cost effective way of getting farmers access to the water they need uh, so they can become productive uh, dry season farmers. Small pumps are crucial elements for agriculture water use. They enable farmers to lift water and apply it in the field. I have a garden, it's about to rim my garden. That garden I'm using a treadle pump. The way I got water, I get water from small ditches which I have dug. Although it's, it's not enough for the whole year, but I'm doing that half a year. Then this treadle pump, how it works, Someone has to go on top of it. I have to be on top. Then I start cycling. <laughs> I start doing like so. Then you find that I connect the pipes. There's an inlet pipe which goes to the ditch, to the water, where the water is. Then I connect another pipe. That's we call as outlet pipe, which goes in into the field where there is vegetables. Kambo, bali kukachilo wana nga uchikoro, kambo wakute rama bakete. Alimwi, chumichi ndi, chari kutupa kuzwa ngana mkati munganda, kambo wakabele kero. Kakuti kukubele anto. Pogade ni enzeli ngono, pamena kusensa yo petro machine inari 2 inch. Mm. So petro machine inari 2 inch, sinari kwanisa kulima pakuru. Because yewe nilofuna kuti mwaizi miyako ya zizira, so that's why inari kulima jabe pangono. Manje hii itanunga garden, garden ya kula maningi, tiri mavinivo pusana pusana, watermelon, sweet melon, tomato, then na derere. So that's why pari machini kuru tapeza kutipariko different na ija ingono. The cost of motorized pumps has declined over the years and the government of Zambia has adopted a series of measures to enable more farmers to buy small-scale agricultural equipment. Yet many small farmers have difficulties acquiring such equipment. One of the challenges in the adoption of micro irrigation equipment has been financing. To resolve that issue, we approached our partners, CETISAM, who are a micro lending institution and who have come on board to join us in the promotion of this equipment and they are doing so by extending loans to our farmers. At the same time, the introduction of technologies which are new to farmers brings new challenges. As IDE, we have assisted our small-scale farmers acquire uh, motorized pumps to do their irrigation and it has worked very well. Most of them have acquired these, these uh, motorized pumps. But then uh, we've, we've noticed that there's also challenges that have come with acquiring these motorized pumps. Like for instance, my farmer today, we've just been discussing, he's using um, one of our motorized pumps, a 3-inch pipe pump. Uh, using a two-inch pipe to irrigate in his garden and there's been a lot of uh, wastage and then damage to the crop. So uh, we've just been discussing on uh, ways in which we can improve the way he irrigates without really wasting and damaging his crop. We need to move a step further by adopting water distribution components or devices and also water storage devices. These three, that's water lifting, water distribution and water storage, make a complete irrigation system. The drip system is very better because you can just communicate the pipes and it starts watering on its own. And you find that even the fruits, the production, it becomes higher than the farrow irrigation. So this drip irrigation have got a lot of advantages because even the fertilizer, when I finish the reservoir, I can apply my fertilizer through the drip. All together to have a motorized drip system, um, this reservoir, these things, it means you are improving, you are finding that you are, you are, the labor is going down and your money is a bit improving. Access to irrigation systems, such as motorized pumps, can significantly boost farming productivity as has been achieved in parts of Asia, potentially benefiting a quarter of a million farming households, up to 16% of rural households.
Despite improved access to credit and a drop in costs, most smallholder farmers still face difficulties acquiring a motorized pump. Prices between retailers can vary by up to 50% for the very same pump model. Many farmers face challenges in accessing services and spare parts for their pumps. Pump wholesalers and retailers are concentrated in urban areas. It's not just about technology. Um, if a farmer has technology and we're not looking at the other aspect, how he's going to get that technology, is he or she going to get the training required, um, is there going to be a, somebody to sell that technology to the farmer. Um, so we, look, we take what we call a value chain approach. All the suppliers of, uh, of small pumps for irrigation are based, what we call in Zambia, along the line of rail in the main towns. They don't have, or very few have, uh, branches outside the main line of rail. So that is very uncomfortable for the small farmers who are not centralized in Zambia. They are decentralized in rural areas. So they have to travel to towns to buy the pumps but also get the spares if there is a problem. FPS simply stands for Farm Business Advisor. Uh, this is a concept, a business concept we've come up with under the Rural Prosperity Initiative, which is the program which we are running right now. Uh, it aims at um, empowering small-scale farmers and our entry point is irrigation and uh, we identified a number of challenges in uh, the adoption of irrigation among small-scale farmers and uh, some of these uh, aspects related to ability to purchase the, the product but also access to, to the product itself and so as I did we looked at the easiest way of uh, coming up with an intervention which will allow the small-scale farmers adopt some of these technologies. And we decided upon the concept of an FBA, who is basically a rural marketing agent. And this is an agent who is based within the community, who understands the community. They picked on Veronica and receive your certificates Thank you. and go out and do the job. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I've met personally some of these uh, farm business advisors and uh, they are very effective, they speak the language of their fellow farmers so they, it's easy for their fa the fellow farmers to be able to understand them and to, to try and um, copy the, the initiatives that they are pushing. Challenges are muteng wato mato kuti uberele pansi because last year, this time so muteng wa ezemushe. Kwambira chabe June, July, August, yenze nguli wa pamtengu wa mushe maningi. Manje so, vambiri bantu, wanabuwa baona kuti, ah, kansi, tomato hii. Pame ya guli wa mushe, apanapaso goro, hii, mwaka teza ngenamo, iza guli wa mushe. So, vambiri wanashanga. This crop means, we started it growing for a long time, but we cannot improve. We need other crops, which can, it can be bought at a good price. When the farmer grows the, the, the vegetable previously, and they produce and they pick them. So they used to ferry these crops in sacks and on bicycles for transportation. So by the time they reach the marketplace, most of the crops are damaged. Any investment in agriculture water management must provide adequate return to smallholders. Surveys have shown that farmers selling fresh vegetables can increase their incomes by up to 35%. But to sell their products, farmers need to be able to find and access adequate markets. How is a farmer going to market the crop that he or she is growing? You know, um, fine, you might be able to sell a box of tomatoes by the end of the road if that's all you're growing, but now you're growing 20 boxes of tomatoes. Where, where's the market going to be? So we try and link farmers to markets. As they become more established, much more entrepreneur, commercial, semi-commercial farmers, we try and encourage them to look at growing higher value crops. So maybe growing, instead of growing tomatoes, to sell at the local market, maybe watermelons for the supermarket. The government has identified that we need actually to create special purpose markets or specific vegetable horticultural markets with the cold rooms and also proper infrastructure, including the infrastructure for transportation from the farmer's field up to that cold room and also linking them to, to some of these supermarkets. We have a lot of uh, giant supermarkets in this country and uh, they are desperately in need of a steady supply of uh, fresh produce. 
Soweto is the largest wholesale market for fresh products in Lusaka with a turnover of 15 million US dollars annually. About 38% of the onions and 31% of tomato crops produced in the country are redistributed through this market. Yet this most important market operates without proper legal framework. It has poor infrastructures and operates mostly informally. As a result, farmers are at the mercy of brokers and dealers. Similar situations have been spotted in other cities. The problem we have is about Soweto market. Soweto market, today you go, you find the price is different. Tomorrow they will tell a story, but when you are at home, as you said, they can phone you to say, bring your crops. Then when you reach there, they said, yesterday there was money, today, yeah, it's a problem. Then for you as a farmer, it's a loss. A survey in Soweto market has helped determine the impact of this situation of a small farmers. Instead of the rule of the jungle that goes on at the current market, then brokers would be allowed, but they have to train and have certificates and be registered. Only then can be, the, be allowed to operate under a regulatory framework. In Zambia, investments in agricultural water management solutions, such as those described here, could benefit more than 5 million people. Food security, the ability to diversify their crops and increased income are among the potential benefits. For this to happen, support to smallholders should be part of an integrated approach in which all aspects of supply, production and distribution are considered. Yeah.